Greetings everyone. I'm Shujat Ali from Medicos Lectures by Shujat and today we are going to talk about anorectal abscesses. A very interesting topic of general surgery. So let's first start from very basic and building its base and then we are going to build an empire of anorectal abscess and we are going in complete details. So focus on this word anorectal abscesses. Ano from anus, rectal and abscesses mean pus formation. So formation of pus in anal area in rectum area might be due to a result of invasion of any rectal flora. We named it as anorectal abscess. So when we talk about normal, so what we see in normal, let's first talk about that. So we see anus, rectum where storage and further absorption of small intestine content take place. Then we have internal anal sphincter muscles which are involuntary muscles, external anal sphincter which are voluntary. We have pectinate line just above that. So it is an embryological you can say development embryological from embryology we will basically when we discuss embryology we will discuss also it. So it is an embryological landmark from where nerves and uh, supply of arterial venous is being drained here this pectinate line. Then we have levator and eye muscle right here it support pelvic visera and fecal movements and peritoneum is above. So this is what we see in normal levator and I we see internal anal sphincter external anal sphincter anus rectum and from above we see uh, peritoneum. So what happened when we see anorectal abscesses at which areas we have most chances of forming of these anorectal abscesses and what are its pathophysiology what we see in that. So we dis discuss in this diagram so here same we have internal anal sphincter external anal sphincter as well as we have pectinate line but main aim in this diagram is to identify that at which areas we have abscesses. So between internal and external anal sphincter we have intrasphincteric abscess name is showing intrasphincteric. We also have subcutaneous abscess so when we see from lower side when we see we have skin so on that we have subcutaneous abscess as well. And in the same way we have deep abscess as well and uh, we also have when you see supra levator and I so in that area in that we have supra levator abscesses. So these are few types of abscesses which we see in case of anorectal abscesses. Now let's talk about what are the pathophysiologies. So in pathophysiology just remember one name which is scripts. Scripts are very important in pathophysiology. Almost 90% of anorectal abscesses which have been developing are that development take place from crypts. Might be there is some damage to the crypt and uh, that damage will lead to abscesses. Might be there is some infection of medication, might be infection due to chemotherapy, might be due to some drugs like corticosteroids. So all those factors they will ultimately damage these crypts and from that we have further development of anorectal abscesses take place. So that's pathophysiology we zoom this particular area we see muscles we see external anal sphincter internal anal sphincter pectinate line anus and from above when we draw it we see rectum so these are crypts that are mainly 90 percent morphology or abscesses formation are due to those crypts. Now talking about sign and symptoms so it is abscess so has sign and symptoms accordingly and also abscess due to some flora so we have fever we see malaise in this case we see pain while sitting and prolonged discharge as from it is abscess so fever malaise pain discharge prolonged discharge are the sign and symptoms diagnosis is basically digital rectal exam will tell us and history and palpable anorectal mass when we see so we basically by visualizing person at taking its history 60 70 percent diagnosis is done at that level 
and if there are some lags so that lags have been covered by a digital anorectal exam differential diagnosis are basically four five points which we see in those particular areas after seeing those four five points we are going to make differential diagnosis number one is hemorrhoids are there is any hemorrhoids that are going to be present number two cyst must check in those particular area are there is any cyst that is going to be present fistulas they are also we are going to check and fissures so these four five points in that particular area after checking as well as after seeing digital rectal exam we are going to diagnose this particular patient that this is an erectile abscess now we are going to talk about management and complications so managements are as we say abscess so drain that abscess out and uh, changing in lifestyle behavioral changes so that person relieve as much faster as he can and in the same way we have anoscope exam that is basically further we basically devise a mechanism for diagno uh, for treatment of particular patient with this anoscope exam identification and then further drain that abscess in localizing that if we didn't able to drain with digital exams so anoscope is also help it out and draining out complications are it is migratory it might be uh, migrate from point to point abscess so that's its complication it can travel and uh, that's a basically guys a overview lecture of this anorectal abscess of general surgery hope you guys all will understand it in case of any query i am there for you guys my number in mention is facebook page as well as youtube channel decision i'll be there for you guys jazakallah khair thank you so much